This message you're about to listen to is brought to you by Victory Inheritance Ministries, the City of Hope. As you listen, may the Holy Spirit minister to you in the simplicity of the Word of God. Go with me to 2 Kings chapter number 6. I will do an expository. We are going to look at it together. An expository of 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. And uh, we we'll let her go to 2 Kings also chapter 4. There are things we need to pick out from these seven verses of Second Kings chapter number six about followership, about leadership, how people get results, why assistants fail, why followers could not succeed as their master, why some young girls or young boys could not step in the shoes of their father. Even when it is said that we, the latter should be greater than the former. But we found out in reality it has not been like that. In reality it has not been like that. Without mentioning them we know some great Nigerians that have lived and died. And they succeeded in their business. Businesses they started. I mean they were multi-billionaires. But after they had died, you would have expected their children to have tripled or doubled what they inherited. Or rather, they ran it down. What do you think was responsible? And then how come the children of a nobody who had no great opportunity today, they have become a somebody? There must have been something that have led to that. It is not only in business, but in ministry. All stratas of life, most followers have not been able to match the level of their boss or who they worked under. Talk less of overtaking him. Why some have done very well. There must be something that they are not doing right or they are doing right. And it's important that we get to know this. That's why the church is a place for education, to school you, to teach you. That's what we are here for. It's not the place where we teach you seven ways to prosper. Everything is, you know, as I was coming, I was listening to a program on radio that we are talking about going to see a therapy. And I called my mom, I said, which therapy is more than Genesis to Revelation? The problem is that we are not following that. If a young man live a decent life, where will he have opportunity to smoke in their hem and his hair scattered? Then they will now go and look for therapy. No, that's just it. If from your childhood, as, as a, what's his name? A Paul taught Timothy and was telling him what to do, how to live his life. And he abided. Your parents say, don't go this way and you don't go that way. Where is the devil? There is no devil anywhere. You are the one that is inviting the devil yourself. The devil has no power. You know, he couldn't touch Job until God gave him a permission. So, so we need to understand this. There are no two ways about it. My father taught me so many things and I learned from it. And I'm still, he's still in my heart till today. And as long as I follow that path, train up a child in the way you will go. Every time you see a generationally successful people, you see a generation that subjected themselves to be taught. Yes. There are no two ways about it. When you see, like the young man that is the MD of FCMB, he's not the founder. He stepped into his father's shoe, and his father is still living. No crisis. No scandal. The bank has not run down. Rather, it's improving. I see a young man that honored his father. The honor, I mean it, but if the guy says, sit, you see, don't do this. 
and he learned the secret. That's why he's working. And then there's no conflict. It's not that your father marry one wife, you marry three. That's not the one I'm saying. So there must be something that you and I are not doing while we are not bettering or doing much more better than the people that lived before us. Greater work shall thou do. Is that not what Jesus said? Are you doing the greater work? When you stay on phone all your life, where are you going to have time to pray? To go to a secret place? Where can you discover things? So we're going to look at scripture. And if we abide by this, there are no two ways about it. In our morning devotion at home today, from daily bread that we use as a family. We are talking about God saying, I will be with you when you go through difficult times. And I told my children, every one of them, I'm the priest of the house. I said, you see, there is nowhere in the Bible said as a Christian, you will not go through difficulties. And today, some of you are still accepting those gospel that those pastors that made their belly their God. Instead of following the truth. What God said that you will go through the fire. But what will happen? Is that not what the Bible said? Yes, sir. So why is it a problem? That when you are going through issue. Then I should not sleep in my house as a pastor. I should not sleep again. He said I should be living in the church. Because you have, you have issues. <laughs> huh? I should just leave my family and run to you. You know, you know it was here I said it. I said he doesn't pray. He doesn't do vigil. I said, I've not finished the one I have. God called me in my house. If the one we are doing in Vim is not enough, it's not me that you see. And people say, oh, a Christian should not die this way. Show me in the scripture how he's appointed a Christian to die. Death is death. I think it was two days ago in Nemo State. They say, what do they call this thing? Is it a bunkery, fire caught up there, and uh, over 100 and something? They have died, burned to ashes, mass burial. is dead. Some their own happen in flight. Some accident. Some sickness. Some they sleep, they don't wake up. Death is death. There is no death, a pattern of way that guarantees you access to heaven. No, so let's, believe, let's leave scripture. Let's practice scripture. Oh, I read in the scripture the apostles were in prison and they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ. That's, that's scripture. They were counted worthy to suffer for Christ. Our own just small mosquito that, that beat us on our right leg. He said, God, are you still there? God, are you still there? Only mosquito. Let's hurry up. Second word, kings. Second word, at least I have those of you that are here. If I can impart this grace, this inside of you, I'm okay. Then you take it and run to your different family. That's how the fire ignites. Verse 1. I didn't title it. That's what I'm doing an expository and it will do comparison. So what I said, my main way I'm focusing is why is it that followers, when they had the opportunity to step in the shoe of their boss, they don't excel? Why do some company that was successful when they handed over to you after some years dies? And why is it that the children of nobody that had no opportunity? suddenly have grown and manifested and now employers of labor. There is something they are doing that the other person is not doing. That's what I want to look by the scripture. Let's go, verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell 
with D is too straight for us. Can somebody tell me the meaning of that word straight? Hmm? What's the dictionary? What's the dictionary? Huh? Confided, right? Look at the language of the scripture. It said the sons of the prophets. Is it the one that gave birth to them? Is it Elisha that gave birth to this? Why was that word sons used? Their spiritual leader, right? Do you have a spiritual leader? Some of you are already answering Papa. You know, you redeemed Christian Church of God. When I was there, they, they divided into states. We have what we call states. Before now, it's region. States, states, states. All of a sudden, the leader said, uh -uh, if, if I'm a head of the state, then I'm a governor. <laughs> they started answering governor. Pastor Debo said, eh? He changed it. He removed from state. Now call it region. That's why you can see <laughs> region 16. Jesus, because some people started asking governor. <laughs> Must I be a politician to be a governor? <laughs> After all, the Bible said the government shall be upon his shoulder. <laughs> the sons of the prophets, they are his spiritual followers. And there are things that are expected of sons. It's not everybody that is a son. It's not everybody that is a daughter. It is important. That's the mistakes that pastors are making. Eh? Somebody come to church straight one month. He give up for impetai straight one month. He has become a son. Or he has become a daughter. He buy you one and cry say, oh, that's my daughter. This sonship was not born out of material presentation or representation or the spiritual sonship we are talking about here. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha their leader. Let's go. I want you to pick these things. These are the things that are going to make you succeed. These are things that makes marriage to succeed. Children to succeed in the academy, business to prosper. Prosper, uh, uh, pastors to win the heart of God. If you follow this principle, lay down principle. They came to their leader, their prophet. The one God has appointed over them. There is a coming. He said, behold now, the place where we dwell with is too straight for us. It takes a son and a daughter to reason the way these guys here are reasoning. It takes spiritual maturity. It takes a people that believes in increase, enlargement, to say what these guys are saying. These sons of the prophet are saying to their leader, Elisha. Don't forget that Elisha served Elijah. And now, we want to compare the followership of Elisha to Elijah and the followership of Gehazi, who is part of these sons of the prophet. And see how it worked out. Within the time we have. This place is straight. The time you will begin to know that your son or daughter is coming of age is when you are no longer thinking for him or her over some basic things. I use the word basic things. As long as you are still thinking for him or her, even when he's 18, 20, 25, you don't have a son. You just have a male. A growing male because of the food he's eating. A growing female because of the food he's eating. Sonship is not born. 
daughtership is not born. You are not born as a daughter or a son. You grow. You work yourself to become a son. That's why when a woman delivers, they don't say, what do you do? You don't say, I deliver a daughter. You say, I deliver a female or a male. That's the take-up standard for everybody. Then you'll not grow to become a son. You can be in church from the day the church started and you remain a male. Somebody can join the church in six months and become a son. I can't stay here and, and, and decode to you or release to you what makes someone a son or a daughter. You can't be a son and your father or your mother and the Lord are agonizing in prayer and you are chewing chingon. Or you say, no, let me leave him or her and you just go and enjoy yourself. Your spirit must connect with it. Remember when Elijah was zeroing up, he told Elijah, wait here. Let me go yonder. <laughs> what was his response? Oh, some of us said, thank God. I don't tire. This man is a workaholic. He doesn't even rest. Thank God for this opportunity. Go, go, just go. I hope you won't remember me for long. Lazy people. You can't go far with such a spirit. That's why you see people in the house of faith, they are full of excuses. Women, youth, men, boys, girls. Every time there's a reason to give to you. Why they are not in the presence of God. There's a reason to give to you. Why they cannot partake in what is going on in the house of faith. And God sits in the heaven and watch. Let's go. Verse what? Verse 2, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take tents, every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, where we may dwell. And he answered, do what? Go ye. So, sorry, did you see that? Every one of you, did you read that? <laughs> They, they were coming with a positive idea that would cost them time and cost them money and expose them to risk. Nevertheless, they still sought for the approval of their HOD, the approval of their boss, of their leader, said, this is what we have. Thank God he said, uh, yes. Have you, have you not seen in a church where some people, they bring vision to the pastor? And the pastor they didn't carry it out. After one more, they have left the church. Whatever idea they bring must be accepted. If it's not accepted, they have gone. He doesn't listen. As though you are the one that called him. He doesn't listen. God has helped him get to where he is. He eh? doesn't listen. You found something good to come. They said they brought it to him. Sir, this is what we want to do. We want to, we want to, we want to build this place. We want to expand this place. It's like us in coming now. By the time we come for Sunday service, he has pulled down this place and raised another structure. Does that not look good? It looks good. But you can't do that. As good as it, it is. You know, somebody can be sincere and sincerely wrong. Somebody can be sincere and sincerely wrong. That's why couples must consult. Friends must consult. Ah, my dear, I, I want to do this or that. What do you think? Don't take fear to other. In your heart, you are sincere. But the circumstances, the time, you may be wrong. Cross-check from your partner. You are provoking leadership and followership. No, we are looking at scripture. What makes people tick and definitely are going to succeed? Such, this kind of people, if they follow this procedure, they can never fail in, in life. It's not possible. 
Because this is, this is scripture. This is standard. You know, God told Moses, speak and he struck. I'm talking about mighty Moses. <laughs> or is it Peter that said to Jesus, if any person talks to you on your way to Jerusalem, I'll remove his head. And Jesus turned Satan, get behind me. And he still followed him to the end. How many of you here that will say Satan? Even to even say sit down. <laughs> he said, what, what around nonsense? Do they know who I am? <laughs> ah, you won't go far. You will never go far with such attitudes. You will never go far. You may be walking out well now, but we'll just watch out for time. No, that's how it is. How can you insult your father, your biological father and mother, and it will be well with you? Which pastor is going to pray for you? It will be well with you. Eh? David was dancing to the glory of God and his wife. This is the wife. You can ima imagine the oil. They, they, they lay together. They do everything together. God's oil upon the man is rough. But he mocked the man. And God shot her womb. Like I told you, if it's our time now, we'll be kabashing. Loose. Lose the womb without knowing what has gone behind. And she was like that to the end because she never repented of it. We have seen things in this walk and we are still seeing. I have told you, you may get what you want, you may not like what you got. You see, the beauty of our life is not 24 Rolls Royce, 24 houses. Austin, the best thing about life is peace. 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 If you find peace in that marriage. I've told you now, I've seen this, this child of a rich man leave Ikoi and to go and stay with a boy in Ajegule. We have mosquitoes and, and she's happy. The parents have to come there to come and bond to her by force. The AC was not good enough, but the mosquito, he can endure it. They find peace there. There are things you guys need to understand. Right now, you can't. You see, in this place, I told you, if you go and steal one million now, and by next week, you start making 10 million weekly, that one million will hurt you forever. The devil will always bring the picture. Because somebody has taught you that one million is one trillion. It's, it's unreachable. You can acquire it. And then you sell your dignity. Look at what God is doing here. When the engineer gave us bill for 12 million, Pastor Van, were we able to do it? He gave us bill now for 20 million. And work has not stopped. He has not stopped the day started. And you won't fear God. And he said, Go ye. That's all you need. That's all you need. How can a son leave a location without telling his father? That's not a son. Without telling the mother. That's not a son. That's a rebellious being. Absalom sat at the gate and people are coming to see his father, David. He was turning their heart to themselves. He was looking nice. After a while, the people took a bloody trumpet and announced him as king. Everything was working well. He was enjoying the fun. Chased his father. Wisdom of his father, no? Uh, uh, how can I clash with my son? I'm born him now. You can't see, he doesn't know this God. And so he didn't want his army and his army to clash. He ran away from the past. And people were mocking, mocking him. A lot of you have gone through that. And we told you, if you have stolen that money, if you have compromised, if you have followed that man, if you have followed that woman, your life will not be like this. Ooh, it's a church. Ooh. They were doing it to David. He held on to him. Rebellion don't last. It doesn't last. You know, I told you, when you buy a cow that you will kill in two weeks' time, and you tie it by your house, and they are feeding the cow, the cow will be happy that you love him, or you love her. They feed, you are not feeding the cow because you love... You are, you, are, you are feeding so that the blood 
the blood will flow well. Yeah, so that's why the Bible says, don't fret over the prosperity of the wicked. Say, so don't fret over it. People that are doing wicked things, they are buying cars, buying houses. Don't look at it. That's what the scripture said. They are not as happy as they sound. Did you hear me? What did I say? Leave those things, we know. All you need is that approval. Go. That's all. Go. Go. If you don't get that approval, go. Don't go. It's risky. It's dangerous. Why? Because what is greater than you will soon appear. Appear. That's why you might be sure that anywhere you are, let God be around there. Uh, in the letter of Paul to the church road, he said, if God be for us, God has to be there. Go. Suddenly what they never foresaw showed up. And then you see the need for this oil. This man. Verse 3. Because of time. I won't say be content. I pray thee. And go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. Did you see that? <laughs> They insisted that you go with them. And how did they describe themselves? Servants. Servant. Let's speak these words. It will help you. Words are powerful. You know, if you have somebody that is your head of company and you say, my boss, the boss. <laughs> you see how that is sound to the person? The boss. If he... He feel, he feel comfortable. He feel relaxed. He feel in charge. And there's nothing he cannot do for you. Today, civilization is teaching us. Call Austin by his name. Mr. Austin. That's what they teach them. Say, create boldness. On the children, boldness. One day, now, now so say, Pastor J. I say, shut up. Shut up, Pastor. Who is Pastor today? I'm your father. That's how it starts. The next thing I say, my G. I'm not your G. I'm your father. It is not you that call me the name. It's my papa that call me that name. They insisted that they go with them. Ah, why did they rely on the anointing, their oil? After all, they are the sons of the prophets. Shall I do greater than a father? <laughs> you, there is no way. That's why the Bible said, a servant can never be greater than his master. You don't understand what that means. Not when the person is on that throne. As long as that seat is there. You don't inherit your father's thought while he's still alive. Go and read the principle of inheritance. You don't sell it while he's still alive. Or anything connected to him. Maybe he's gone and his wife is alive. He's alive by his wife. Let's understand what can save us and guarantee us a future. And cut off from what can cut your life short. And they say, oh, he slept, he didn't wake up. Oh, this can happen. God gave God take No. Jesus has to tarry for another six to nine hours, three hours, waiting for the thief on the left to repent before he gave up the ghost and seal it up. First, verse two, he said, go. Second, verse three, he said, I will go with you. Who is with you? Who is going with you? Very important to your prosperity in life. Who shall you make rubble? Who is covering you? Why is this rain? We are only hearing the sound, but it's not dropping on us. Because there is a covering. On whose name have you appeared? On whose name have you appeared? Verse 4. 
Every time I go to preach, I always, Bishop Mike Okonkwo don't follow me where I am, but I always have my son to Bishop Mike Okonkwo. And he's aware that I am here. You think that a man becomes successful by strength? No. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's not hard work that prosper people. It's the principle of the word. If it's hard work, how did Mary without intercourse conceive? Where did Sarah receive strength to conceive at that old age? Let us not reduce and scatter the foundation of our faith by the ephemeral things of this world. That's why I don't believe in therapy. The Bible is my therapy. Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Free in all things. How can I go to somebody who will remove uh, what you call mental or something when I don't subject myself to things that will cause to the mental things? That's not a waste. You can't remove drunkenness in me when I'm not taking things that are to, to that. And what made me not to? Because of the scripture that I have abided with for my youth. And so it's not possible. I can only leave it. There's a power in it that helps me to say no to what you cannot say no to. And that's where the difference is. So, verse 4, he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. He was watching. He sat somewhere. And they were doing the physical job. The practical work. Verse 5, but as one was felling, that's falling a beam. The Bible said, the axe did wall, fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. For it was borrowed. Why did he cry? After all, they came up with the vision. Why did he cry? After all, they located the location. Why did he cry? They, they cut the beams. They have all it takes to build the place. But the instrument has fallen. And into a water. Into an ocean. And he cried and said, we borrowed it. We are in trouble. They can't be in trouble when they got an approval from their boss or their God. They cannot be in trouble. So, where their anointing stopped, Elisha's own came up. Where their confidence, their effort, their investment stopped, Elisha's own began there. Oh, wise uh, prophet's sons. Insisting that they get approval, insisting that he goes with them, foreseeing ahead of time this kind of issue coming up. But as one was falling the beam, the beam, the ass fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Verse 6. And the man of God said, And the man of God said, We have fell it. <laughs> and he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick. As he was hearing, so he was doing. It was not written anywhere in the scripture. Say when they asked, nobody saw that they asked, nobody perceived. That it was going to fall. Why they were crying? Show me the place. It's like Peter washing his nets, who caught nothing. Jesus did not give him any problem. He said, he rather said, Give me your boat, borrow me your boat, let me do some evangelism. And he cut down a stick and cast it teeter. And the iron did what? Iron floated. That's a miracle. And the iron 
That was the end of sorrow. That was the end of panic. That was the end of fear. Simply because they got approval. What was bigger than them showed up. But the grace upon which they went rescued them from embarrassment. Therefore, said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. It was that easy. It was that simple. But it wasn't that simple. It's a product of behind agonizing and prayers. It's a product of sacrifices. Do you know what it took Elisha to get to this level where he can cut a wood and he an axe that sank could flow. It, it looks easy, but this work that is going in here, there are people that are praying behind the scene. Unknown to you. Do you know what it takes for somebody to bring out a million? Five million? In, in this time, it takes the hand of God touching that person. That's why when you find a man or a woman of God that God called, you better reference him or her. Because you only see them when they appear. You don't see the pain they are carrying. You don't know what they are going through. You don't know the sacrifices. And so when they give you that instruction, stick to it. And then man was told, go and bait seven times. Dip yourself. He started bragging. First, second, third. To the sixth one. Nothing happened. He said, what, what around nonsense is this? The little girl said, he said, which one is easier? He has given you a much more difficulty, which is what most of us would like to do. Run around the legs 20 times. Run around. Kneel down. Raise your head. Open your eyes. Move. That's the one you guys believe more. It's a serious man. But go, show yourself to the priest. And as they moved, they were healed. Only one came back. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to chapter 4, quickly. You know the story of the Sh uh, Shunammite woman. But that's not that. Run down to 29 because of time. I need to round up. How many of us know about the story of the Shunammite woman? Huh? That made a home and fed and fed who? Elisha. And what happened? He said, by this time tomorrow, God will give you a son. And the woman said, No, don't don't just mock me. I didn't give you know you pastors. When they bless your soul, start prophesying. Even when God did not say anything. Just leave me alone. I'm a, I'm just I'm a, I'm I believe God. I'm living the scripture. Huh? Where God said, give to those who I need. Bless my servant. That's what I'm doing. I didn't say it so that you become excited. I begin to. <laughs> and he's saying that nobody from the sincere heart that blesses God, blesses his servant, blesses his work, does not go unrewarded. He didn't even ask the woman, do you need a son? What's your problem? No, he only asked her, as he said, what do you think we can do to this woman? He said, oh God, this is why we have been coming and eat here. I've noticed something. What did you notice? I never see any young boy, a guy, or a child, a female crying. Oh, nothing. There's everywhere silent. So call her. And the woman came, stood by the door. This was her household, so stood by. Some of us will just run and say, yes. We'll run to him. Without you, sit down. He would even sit down. He would sit down. He stood by the gate. It's called reverence. He showed me that she has been taught. It proves to me where she's coming from. And when she was offered the child, he said, no, uh, don't lie to me. By this time. And exactly it happened that way. The woman was excited. A new life came in her. And all of a sudden, the child fell ill.
This is a product of prophecy. Yet, sickness caught him up. Eh? Because some of you said, ah, I donated the land to the church. After donating it, all of a sudden they just sacked me. Are you sure that that church is a, there's nothing about it? <laughs> this is scripture. Pastor Boss says, This is scripture. He placed the man. The child came. The child fell sick. He will have thought that sickness will not touch him. He will just be growing. Everything will be working because he's a child of prophecy. Yes, <clears throat> he didn't just fall sick, he died. He died. This one even tried, self. Remember, prophet, some will never near the streets of that church again. They will become, pro they will become evangelists. That place, don't go. They will give you a child, they will kill the child. They use it to renew. As they said, that I was killing my members too. Well, they said it now. Here, people who said it are here. And they still come for me to pray for them. It's not outside us here. And we still laugh. We know things, we keep quiet. Because it's about God. Twenty nine. Then he said to Gad, So when 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 the child died, the woman did the right thing, he ran to the source again. Man of God, this is it. I didn't ask for this, but look at it. And the prophet was busy doing his things. He decided to, we are doing comparison. I, I, I remember what I told you when we started, the reason why assistants could not step in and succeed their master. Then he said to, 29, then he said to, that's where we'll be rounding up. Then he said to Gehazi, guard up thy lungs, take my staff. Take what? My staff. Have you seen where an oba, a king is is, uh, 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 is it coronated or appointed? The governor always give what they call staff of office. In the House of Rep, State House of Rep, Federal, there is a maze, which is a symbol of what? Authority to gather. If it's not there, no gathering. So this is, this is the origin. When you see whoever is holding it, that's the person that have the mantle, the authority. To operate. He gave it to Gehazi. He said, take it to the child. Go and lay it on, on him. Uh, okay, let's, let's run. And go thy way. If thou meet any man. Look at the condition. If thou meet any man. Do what? Salute no, salute him. No. Salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. So this will tell you the kind of training that Elisha went through Elijah. He was bumper to bumper to his boss. I have gone out to preach sometime with, I will not mention him. It was time for me. They have called me up. The person who is holding my Bible, I can't find him. <laughs> so you just see that he was not there. He was not. <laughs> he did not follow me for service. He followed me for show. Where my Bible now? It has disappeared. <laughs> So it gives me an idea how Elisha got to where he is. Do you think it's easy to serve? Do you think it's easy to follow someone and successful about it? The Bible talks about it. says, indeed, that shall that have good success. That tells me there is bad success. Don't greet, don't salute, don't answer. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. 30, quickly, as we begin to round up. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. The mantle is in the hand of Gehazi. The woman said, I will not go with him, except you, Elisha, go. 
with us. And what happened next? The scripture said, and he did what? He followed her. So if he followed her, why didn't Elisha hand over the mantle back to his boss? And why didn't he wait on her? You know, there are some people that are, they are in a hurry to sit in the senior pastor's seat. <laughs> there is something that holds that office. It's not about the design of the seat. Gabriel, uh, uh, what's the church? Better ministry. Oh, oh, do you hear me? Those days when Papa Idahosa was still alive, they went for ministers' conference. Meaning he was reigning. He was, you know, he started the first video, live video, that NTA we show live from beginning to end. Here, all of us used to gather. And Kachiv was business. I said, you bring one million, they'll finish selling it. Are there? That church that you saw. That's the first church that, that has cold water. Any tap compound, you open tap, it's cold. The man, the man was blessed. The first pastor in Africa to have a private jet. Gabriel. He was parked at the, at the airport there. You see G.O. mission. Gabriel do you mean world mission. So anywhere he goes, you know that somebody came. He came for that conference. He was well known. Papa told him to, to go and sit down, uh, sit on his seat. He gave him the seat. By the time he sat, he sat there, he sat there. It's like somebody they threw fire on. He started screaming and shouting. Just to sit down there. There's more about it. <laughs> I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed him. What gave Gehazi the speed? Why is it they gave him mantle? He's in a hurry to perform miracle. The woman you are going to raise his sides, they not go with you. He stayed behind. The boss said, I will go. He was still running with it. Wow. 31. Wow. Let's see the miracle. And Gehazi passed on before them. Did you read it now? <laughs> Sunday, are you sleeping? <laughs> eh? Don't be Gehazi. Yo. Don't sleep. He passed them. Pastor Boss said he passed them. So from there we can see that not that he has left. And the woman said, no, I'm not going until you follow me. The Bible says he passed them. <laughs> he was holding the, the authority of his master. He told his master to be coming behind. Daddy, are, you, are, you, are you seeing why some people will never make it? It was in this church I told you. I pastored in Redeemed Chapel of Praise. In a meeting like this, my boss is late now, Chris Chikelwe. He was in that service. The way we are raised, the principle of redeem is that he's our zonal pastor. Any parish that is under him, if he, if he, he appears there on a service day, eh, even if you're about to preach, you just cite him, you just leave your mic. That's why they are thick. That's why they are successful. That's why there is depth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, that day, there was need for some microphones. We had shot a mic, and he raised, he made people to pledge. The next day, office hour, he came to the church office, which is his house. The chapel is just behind his house. And one of our members who bought, who was redeeming his mic, came. I met him. That, my office was there, you know, he now came in. That's when I came. I went straight to him and said, Daddy, the mic, I pledge. He now said to me, Ah, Pastor, uh, pray for him. Have you heard me say this before? He said, pray for him. <laughs> I said, no, sir. He said, no, he's your member. Pray for him. Right inside of me. You know, God has helped me with wisdom, even right from when I was small. <laughs> it's not school. I told myself, one, who appointed me the pastor? No, no, no. Who appointed me a pastor? This man. So can I be a pastor without him? Which kind of prayer can I pray when he is there? This is what I was telling myself inside. Me, I jump and pass straight. That temptation, I jumped and passed. I said, no, sir. He insisted. I said, no, sir. After I insisted, I said, no, sir, three times. And I called the person and prayed. My own is to say, Amen. I was just six months in that parish when opportunity came to start a parish, the first church in Romania, Bucharest. Redeem wanted to plant a church. 
we have nine parishes under him. And they said, he said, every pastor should appoint one person from which he will choose one out of those nine people that will go with him to go plant the church in Romania. Bishop Kings was my pastor. He, he nominated me. All that parish, and our parish was the youngest. And Pastor Chikrele took me. He said, that's the person that will go. It was trouble in the Holy Spirit. When did he join with him? How old is he? This and that. That's not what gives breakthrough. How old it is. They were there. I flew. See Gehazi. That's why he didn't end well. He passed his boss with a mantle. The man gave him the mantle with the mind that the woman would go with him. While he continued his spiritual exercise. But the woman insisted. I like that word. You know, there are some of you, pastor said, uh, mm, I cannot uh, make it. Go. It's okay, sir. And he go. The woman said, this matter is not a Gehazi matter. It was, you are the source. It was through you. It's not a Gehazi matter. This one is bigger than, this is not a servant master. This guy never graduates. This is death we are talking about.